Unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard about the big changes to the real estate industry that kicked off this past weekend. There are big rules changes. It's probably the biggest change in about 30 years. But while there are big changes, a lot of what we do and a lot of how things are done are very much the same. But it's the mechanics of it. It's the hows of it. Some people are surprised by some of these rules. There are four big changes that you need to know about. One, you may not be thinking about it. If you're looking to buy a house, you absolutely need to see this video because things definitely have changed. Thanks for joining us. This is Steve with the Malone Home Team EXP here in the North Georgia area, just outside of Atlanta. Uh, if you're joining us, found us, if you would not mind liking and subscribing to this video, it's going to help us get this information out. And a lot of people need to see this kind of information going forward about what has changed in the market. So again, like, subscribe, appreciate you, love you, mean it never change. All right, let's roll. We've got four big changes that have happened. Now, because of we had the big um, lawsuit uh, that was uh, settled earlier this year, NAR, National Association of Realtors, basically came out and said, all right, this is how we're going to do things going forward. And uh, everybody was like, all right, you know, the Department of Justice, everybody looking over and said, all right, we accept these changes. We're going to implement them on August 17th, 2024. And that was just a couple of days ago, recording this basically the Thursday of the next week. So we're still kind of getting used to these changes. We've been planning for them for a while. Now that they're in effect, it's very interesting to see how all this is playing out. That being said, as we've been talking with people this week, buyers and sellers, I mean, this is actually a, a big deal. A lot of people are saying, all right, give it, give me the three minute version. Give me this, give me that. Um, and we've done that in other videos. What I want to do for you today, there's four things that have changed. Four big changes to how things are done. So we want to go over those changes how that's going to impact you, whether you're buying your house or selling your house, because it has changed the game for both. Now, ask my opinion on this. When it first happened, I was kind of like, I was frustrated, I'll be honest, uh, when everything went down at first, because, you know, I'm, you know, I like change, but I don't like change for change's sake. Like, prove to me that this is going to work, like that this is necessary. As we've gone through time and you see, all right, this is how this is going to benefit buyers. This is how this is going to benefit sellers. This is how this is going to benefit agents. This is how it's going to benefit the uh, the real estate world on the whole. Once we started coming into an idea of, all right, this is how it's all going to play out, I am, I'm like way okay with this now. Um, I just wish, that, to be completely honest, and I'll be fully transparent, I wish a lot of the agents paid attention to what the heck's going on and, and were, have done what they were supposed to do. I mean, we we were implementing all this stuff about a month ago, uh, well ahead of when, you know, the, the deadline of August 17th. Some agents have not yet. So we're going through that kind of growing pains or whatever. But I think a lot of these changes are going to help. A lot of them are going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt at first. We'll talk about that, especially the one talking about buyers. Buyers, yeah, you want to buy a house, you want to go look at a house, you now have to have representation. A lot of people are going to be upset about that, but there's a reason for that. And I think it's best for the buyer and the agent. Okay, so we'll talk about that. But here we go. Four reasons, or four changes, I should say, that came out of this ruling. Four changes that have been implemented. They are in effect right now. And then one more that people are they're thinking about, and it may not end up being a good deal. But we'll start with the big four first. Here we go. The first one I want to talk about is there is no commission sharing anymore from the listing agent to the buyer's agent, okay? In the state of Georgia, it was laid out a little bit better. In the state of Georgia, on our contracts, what we would say is, all right, Mr. Seller, if you're paying the listing agent X percent, and from that X, the listing agent is going to share that with the buyer's agent as an enticement to get the buyer's agent to bring their people over, okay? Um, in the state of Georgia, that was optional. Uh, some parts of the country, it was not delineated that, that that was what was going to happen. They would say, all right, I'm pay paying my agent X percent. And nobody ever said they were supposed to, but sometimes they didn't. Sometimes the buyer was confused, things like that. We still have buyers confused, even though it was laid out in the contract, even though we described it in the contract, there was still confusion. So the ruling basically says that we are not allowed to share commission anymore, the listing agent. This is what we can now do, all right? The seller. This is how it is in Georgia. A lot of the states are different, okay? But in Georgia, when you are selling your house and you sign a listing agreement, you say, 
I, the seller, am paying X percent to the listing agent to sell my house. Okay? But it, that's just money that goes towards the listing agent. Then it says, I optionally have the option to give money towards the buying agent as an enticement to bring them in. So instead of having the listing agent have, have the money and offer it, now the seller is, it's kind of the same thing, sort of, but the, the, the mechanics of it have changed. What has changed now with that is now the sellers, even though this has been the way it has been in Georgia, it's because of the transparency in these, in these agreements, um, now, because of the transparency, the sellers now realize, all right, I'm paying the listing agent and I am optionally paying for a buyer's agent or offering compensation for a buyer's agent, okay? Now, the question becomes, do sellers do that? I still think 90 to 95% of sellers are going to offer some kind of compensation. Some sellers are not going to offer any compensation, which both of them, that's 100%, they're right. Our how we're going to go forward is we would suggest offering some kind of compensation as an opportunity because it's going to allow for buyers to afford to get the house. If buyers don't have compensation and they have to do it themselves, we'll talk more about that in a minute, then they've got to figure out how am I going to pay my agent, okay? So, but if the seller does not want to pay, we just lay out, all right, this is where we're going to be. This is the situation, okay? So in situations, some people are going to say, I'm willing to pay up to this. Some people say, you know, if it's a really hot area, we may say, hey, look, they may ask for it because now you can ask for it in a contract if you're a, a, a buying agent and we'll just, we'll negotiate it. We can negotiate it now. It's another piece that we can negotiate. Again, a little bit more transparency. Okay. So the big change, while, while the actual, what we're doing is, you know, the, the seller is paying their agent and potentially a buyer's agent, which is what always happened before. It's just the mechanics of it. The agent, myself as a listing agent, I'm not sharing the commission now, or the sharing the compensation rather. I am now, basically, I get paid by the seller. And also, if there's a buying agent that gets compensated, they get paid by the seller as well. Okay, So there's no sharing between brokerages or between whatever. So that's big change, number one. The next thing that has changed regarding compensation, okay? Up until this point, uh, if, if a buyer was going to be, a buyer's agent was going to be compensated by showing a house, by writing off or whatever, it would show on the listing, okay? That the selling agent or the seller or whatever was offering X percent if you come bring your people buy the house. It's not shown anymore on any form of MLS or any kind of listing portals or whatever. Because, again, the point of the, um, the lawsuit is to really have two separate camps. You got the sell side and you got the list side, or sorry, you got the list side and you got the buy side. Two separate camps, okay? And we're really trying to delineate them as, and decouple them as much as we can. So that's kind of the goal of the, of the, um, of the lawsuit. So that being said, sometimes what would happen is... The feeling was if the commission was too low, there are some agents that would say, I don't want to show this house because the commission's too low. That was an allegation. It was never proven, but that's an allegation. I know plenty of agents that would do that. I also know of agents who basically told their people, look, we work for X percent. That's how much we get paid. And if they're off only offering X minus one or X minus two, I'm going to need for you to pay extra to, to fill the gap. And... Some of those buyers be like, I don't want to pay you money out of pocket. You know, I want to be compensated from the, the seller. So if they went and looked and they saw that they were only offering X minus 2%, they wouldn't look at the house. So there was a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, people saying that they're steering and they're this and that. So what it is now is there's just a listing. If I want to find out how much or whatever, if I'm a buying agent, I want to find out, are they offering compensation, whatever, I would call the agent and say, you know, is there compensation to a buyer's agent? And then from there, then we have an opportunity to say, we're offering X percent or offering X minus 1%, X minus 2%, X minus half percent, whatever it is. Or, you know, my seller might say, look, 
I want you to protect that money as much as you can. So I don't want you tipping your hand. And if that's the case, I might say something to the effect of, you know, the seller is more than willing to offer some kind of compensation to a buyer's agent, depending on the offer, depending on the net to them, things like that. So put in the offer, we'll take a look at it, and we'll get back to you. A lot of that's going to go on too. So, you know, a lot of agents are nervous because they don't know what they're going into. But a lot of the really, really good agents, and this is how this is our approach, we'll try and find out. But if I can't find out, we're going. We're going to go and we're going to ask for the compensation that, that we deserve. Okay, because you know, I'm at the point in my career where I, I don't feel like I deserve it. I, we do damn good work and we're going to ask for that compensation. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter for us and for the really good agents. That's how they're looking at it. They're just saying, and the reality is we have to have conversations. This, we'll get into this in number three and number four. We're gonna have, um, we have to have conversations with our buyers to basically say, hey, look, this is, this is kind of what we get paid. So we're going to go look at houses anyway. Okay, I'm going to try and, and get it covered as much as I can. Again, we'll talk deeper about that in just a couple minutes. But that's the really big change number two. So big change number one, we're not sharing between brokerages compensation. The seller, if they want to, if they want to pay the buyer's agent, they do it themselves. And it is optional. Always has been, but now it's really set in stone, really delineated, really split down the middle. Okay. So that was number one. And number two, we just talked about if there is compensation, shoot, we don't know what it is. We gotta call, we gotta talk, we gotta do this and that. That's change number two. Now here we go. On the buy side, this is the big change that has everybody up in arms. If you want to go see a house now, you have to sign a representation agreement with an agent before you get to go in the house. The only situation where that's not enforced is an open house. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But if you've got, and I've had this, where I have friends who have been thinking about it, whatever, da, 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 and they said the house came in my neighborhood that I kind of like, or a house down the street. Let's go look at it real quick. We'll go look at it real quick. And they're friends of mine. They know I'm going to take care of them, all that stuff. Those days are over. In those situations, it kind of stinks, and I get that. But what it's going to do is it's going to keep people from basically calling agents offline, show me the house, and then disappearing. Because for two reasons, and I'm going I'm to stick up for agents here. Um, you know, we work hard. We really do. Real estate agents work hard and they need to have some kind of protection for themselves. The other thing is buyers, if they're looking at a house and they really like that house, they kind of need to know about what's going on in that house before they put an offer in and stuff like that. And there's a lot of things that you legally, we can't talk about unless we work together. Okay. So Having that agency, having that kind of, you know, that that contract signed is going to protect the buyer and it's going to protect the agent. It's good for both sides. Both sides are, are in a lot of ways not happy about it, but at the end, it's really what's best for the whole situation. So here are the options. Kind of have three options. In a previous thing, I talked about kind of two options. Really, there's three, Okay. Number one is you can sh you can sign a one-time showing agreement, okay? You can go in, call me, one-time showing agreement. We are There's no guarantees about anything. There's no guarantees I'm going to get paid unless the seller's going to pay it. If the seller's not paying anything, you're not promising to pay anything, I don't get paid, okay? Um, so you see where I'm going with this. Um, and because there's a showing agreement and there's not really agency there, um, I really can't give you any representation. You go in and say, hey, the house is listed 500. I think it's kind of high. What do you think, Steve? I don't think anything. Listed 500. This kind of looks weird. What do you think, Steve? I don't think anything. I can't think anything legally. Okay. If we don't have an agency agreement where you hire me as your buyer's agent, I can't have, a, I can't have opinions on anything. Okay. If it's a one-time showing thing, there's no agency there. It's just I have legally agreed to show you the house. Okay. And hopefully we'll work together, but there's no guarantees. Okay. So that's option number one. Um, and some agents will do that. Uh, we won't uh, just because it doesn't protect us and protect our team. Um, and it just is what it is. And the reality is if we do that, I can tell you what I really want to tell you about the house because I really want to tell you if it's overpriced. I really want to tell you about that wall that it looks jacked up might be termites in it. I really want to tell you about the fact that the HVAC is older than older than you know what. And 
probably needs to be replaced and all that stuff. I want to tell you all those things. I can't if we don't have an agency agreement. So, so offer number or option number two is, and what we'll probably go for is kind of a more short-term buyer's agreement. Call it five days, seven days. It would allow for us to show you that house and any houses within those couple days. It allows for us to where if we put in the offer on the house and we get you to closing, you know, we get compensated. We'll go over the compensation rules, things like that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we'll talk more about that in number four. Uh, and you know, all that good stuff. But within five days, let's say you and I, we don't get along. Five days, we're gone. And, and you don't have to work with us. And the only caveat to that is there's something called a protected period. Protected period, we usually do 60 days. Let's say you go look at 123 Main Street with me. Really like the house, but you don't want me to be your representation on somebody else. So you wait five days. Our agreement comes to an end. Then you go contact your uncle who just got his license, and he helps you buy the house. We do have... Because the protective period, the potential and the legal recourse to say, no, we get paid for that one. We will get you to closing on that because we showed you that house within the five days. And then we're protected on any house that we showed during that those five days. Okay, you go on day six when we're out of whatever or somebody else and go see a house that we didn't show you. Then, I mean, more power to you. Go find a house and go get, get your house. But if we helped you see a house, you wait five days. Go call your uncle. It's really not fair to the agent. Okay, so that you know that's something to keep in mind too. But that short-term agency, what that does do is we work together. You have an agent. Now I can tell you, yeah, this house is way overpriced. Yeah, that air conditioner is older than you know what. Yeah, that there there looks like there is termite damage. Yeah, that I can tell you all that stuff because I legally represent you and I can do that. Okay, so short term. But really what we're going to aim for and what you should aim for is a long-term investment, okay? If you're looking to buy a house, okay, in this market, and the market's getting ready to pick up because the rates are coming down, a lot of buyers are coming back. This is not the market for part-time buyers. I don't want you to be the kind of buyer that sends a house to your realtor once every month, twice every month. Hey, what do you think? You don't keep your pre-qualification up to date, um, you know, things like that. That's not this market. Okay, because you're going to get beat. You need to keep your foot on the gas. You want to keep your pre-qualification up to date. You got to update it every 90 days if you haven't found something. But number two, and most importantly, find the right agent to help you. You want an agent that knows what the heck they're doing, has done it for a while, can identify problems, you know, and can negotiate and can negotiate compensation if they need to. Again, we'll get into that number four. Okay, but. That's really big change number three. And this is the biggest change that is, that's kind of raising a lot of eyebrows. Again, open houses, you're protected. Go look at open houses. You can go in an open house. Just know when you go in an open house, you have no representation. The house is represented by the person holding the open house, um, so they can't answer anything. Uh, but you can still go look. But you can't go just find a house on the internet, call an agent, and they come over and show it to you. That is not allowed anymore. And I'll tell you, the, the our... You know, we've heard a lot of stories from across the country of uh, realtor associations saying basically, hey, we're going to audit early on. We're going to audit like crazy to be sure this is being done because this is a big deal. So we're, we, we will make, we, we can't make, we can't make, I, I would like to say, all right, just this one time, maybe no, maybe no. We, we can't make any, um, you know, whatever the word is, I need more coffee, but we can't do it. I can't do one. Okay, maybe not. Okay, whatever the word is, put in the put it in the comments. You know what the word is. Um, but anyway, we can't do that. We, everybody has to be signed before we go see a house. So that's really, that's big change number three, leading to big change number four. If buyers sign an agency agreement with a buyer's agent, um, not just that one-time showing thing, because that one-time showing thing and that one-time showing thing, basically it's if the seller is paying, you get paid. If they're not, you're not. And that's it. And the buyer doesn't get any representation or, or good representation, I should say. If it's an agency agreement, well, it's, whether it's the five day or the three month or whatever. One of the things we have to talk about is how do we get paid? Okay. So there's two sections in a Georgia form. One of them says, if nobody is compensating us on the selling side for any reason in any way, this is how much money we need to be paid to do our job. Below that basically says, or 
below that basically says if the selling or the, if the seller is compensating us, we're allowed to make up to blank. And we usually like put a very high number because just in case they have some kind of bonuses or whatever. Um, but, and then there's a thing below that basically says if the seller is offering, it takes away whatever the buyer has to, to offer. So for argument's sake, I'm going to use fake numbers. So I'm not, we're not steering anybody or showing anybody. So let's say that I agree with the buyer that they're going to pay me 90% commission. Okay. That'd be really cool. If you want to do that, call me 90% commission. Okay. So they're going to pay me 90% commission or co compensation rather, excuse me. I still been used to that 90% compensation. Okay. But we go to a listing and the listing, the seller is offering buyer's agents, the seller's offering buyer's agents 100% compensation. See, that's an even better deal. If you find one of those, give me a call. So the 100% compensation, that because it's above the 90, it, it cancels the 90 out. So now my people don't owe me 90% compensation. The seller has provided basically the 100% compensation. So I would make 100% compensation. Okay. So that's how that would work. But let's say that they, they, my buyer agreed to 90% and the seller is only offering 80%. If that's the case, then the buyer would owe us 10% to get to that 90%. So basically we agree with the buyer, like we need to make at least this. We say the seller will take anything up, up to this. And if there's a difference, you know, if there's a difference, you pay it. If there's a surplus, we just wipe, wipe yours out and you don't worry about it. So we do that. Okay, so that's where we are on the buy side. Okay, that's what the agreement's going to say. So that's our job. Now, our job also is to be sure that we're protecting our buyers from having to come cash out of pocket to pay our compensation. Okay, um, because you have to pay closing costs, you have to pay down payment, you pay all kinds of stuff. Okay, so if it's a situation and we're still figuring out the, the, the mechanics of how we're going to ask for it, there's unique ways that, that we're talking about it, you know, among some of my realtor friends, you know, that, that we're real good friends. We're all going through this together. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, 90 to 95 percent of the time, the sellers are going to pay some kind of compensation and the buyer's agents, you know, we're probably willing, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I'm willing to take a little bit of a deal if it, for my people, if, if they have to get into the house and there's no other way, you know, we work on, on referrals, uh, as our main form of, uh, of business. So we take care of our people, people are going to take care of us. So we're not, I'm not going to hang somebody out to dry because they're not going to pay 90%. You know, maybe I'll take 80% or 70% or whatever, but, but you know what I mean? Anyway. So we're still trying to figure out the mechanics of that, but that's one of the things you need to talk about the buyer and the buyer's agent. Or how are some ways where if that sell, look, if we love that house, we love one, two, three main street, but they're not offering compensation for the buyer's agent. I don't have money out of my pocket to give to you. What are our options? That's some of the things. So that's one of the things that we talk about during our buyer strategy session, where we talk about the form. We talk about what you're looking for in a house, talk about how everything works. That's one of the things we talk about is if they're not offering compensation and you don't have the compensation in your pocket, what are some ways that we can work it out, work it into the deal, work it into the contract to where, you know, you're protected, we get compensated and the seller feels like they win. If all three of those things can happen, then let's figure out. And we're coming up with those strategies right now. It's something that we're talking about with our people. But that is big change number four. We had to discuss pay on the front end before we go out there. So that way there's no surprises. Now, because of that, that's why we really, you know, I'm not too worried about calling agents and finding out how much they're going to, they're offering to buyer's agents, how much the seller's offering to a buyer's agent. We'll figure it out. If my people like the house and they've agreed, we're going to figure it out and we'll just figure it out. Okay. We'll figure it out on the back end. Okay. So there you go. Number four, you got to talk about pay ahead of time now. So those are the four big things. Now that's leading to a lot of people thinking, well, why don't I do this? And that is going to have unintended consequences. So here we go. A bonus number five. So you want to buy a house. You, do, you don't want to pay compensation to anybody. The seller, they're offering compensation to their, to their listing agent and they would offer compensation to a buyer and a buyer's agent. But you think to yourself, well, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm not going to put in an offer. 
or I'm not going to use an agent. I'm just going to put in an offer as an unrepresented buyer. That way the seller keeps that money and, you know, and maybe it, it gives me a leg up in the competition. And maybe it does in certain situations. The one thing I want you to keep in mind though, right? If you're selling, if my people are selling a house, we're going to have a conversation that if we bring in an unrepresented buyer, we have to charge a little bit more because an unrepresented buyer doesn't do their own forms. An unrepresented buyer doesn't write their own contracts within, you know, the standard GAR forms to be sure that they're legally, you know, compliant. They don't check with the lender. They don't check to be sure the appraisal is gone. They don't check all that other stuff. We just bought a whole lot of, a lot of work. The buyer's end of the work, the buyer's agent's end of the work because they don't have a buyer's agent. Well, now we have to do the buyer's agent work. That's number one. Number two, we just took on, took on a whole heck of a liability on this. So, you know, because let's say something goes sideways. They have no representation and I represent the seller, right? It's my job to be sure that my seller gets the absolute 100% best deal possible. And that means being sure that the buyer, I, I hope the buyer gets a good deal, but that's not my job. My job is to be sure that my seller gets the best deal possible. The buyer's going to screw something up if they don't have representation, okay? The buyer could screw something up if there's no representation. How's that? There. That's fair. Um, they are gonna. They could potentially miss something uh, that they should have asked for. They're going to potentially miss a deadline that they should have known about, They're going to which it's not my job. They have no representation. The problem is, in our society, people are going to sue. If the poop hits the fan and people feel like they were, they were put out, they're going to sue. And so when they sue, they're not going to sue their agent. They don't have an agent. So they're going to do the next best thing and they're going to sue us or they're going to sue our brokerage. So there is a, a level of liability there that we have to take on if we take on somebody. To be honest with you, I would really rather not take on an unrepresented buyer. Uh, we've gotten close a couple times. We've never done it. We've gotten close a couple times and, and it thankfully fell apart because I don't want to be in that. Now we can do dual agency where we represent both the buyer and the seller. That's weird too, but I feel less weird about that, believe it or not, than do about the unrepresented buyer. Because unrepresented buyer is, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential headache there. Okay. So that being said, there are going to be some listing agents that will be fine. We will do it for like, you know, X minus 2%. If we were going to pay X to the, um, to the buyer's agent, then we'll just pay X minus two to somebody, to you guys to, to do all the job, all the work. We're going to be you know, a little north of that. I really, it's going to be a case by case basis, which is what all of these should be. There should be no set standard across the board for everybody. Every team and every agent should do it for their own rate. Okay. And that's part of what this was about too. So I can tell you our, our group, we're, we're going to, we're going to price it high. We're going to try and price it out. If we have to do it, we have to do it, but we're going to, we're going to price it out to where we're covering ourselves for liability. Of it. So that's something to think about. If you're looking to do it without an agent, just know some agents may not take it because they may price it out. That's just something to keep in mind. Okay. Everybody's a little bit different. It's just one of those other things that it's a, one of those things that everybody thought, you know, they think, Oh, this makes sense. You got to think about all the logistics of it. You know, I'm, I'm a high, if you know the DISC personality scale, I, I become much more of a DI in my old age, but at my heart, I'm a C personality. I'm all about the details. I'm all about looking at the fine print. I'm all, and I'm all about, about what are the different scenarios that are going to come up? And there's a lot of different scenarios that can come up in the event where somebody comes in un for unrepresented. So there you go. There's my two cents on that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you think that's the workaround, it might be, it might not be may not be worth the time or the headache for both parties to do it that way. So there you go. There's your five. Let's wrap this thing up. So that's in a nutshell how everything's going to work now. Okay. So again, got them all written down here. Uh, no commission sharing. The seller's going to just pay the buyer's agent and the listing agent or just the listing agent if they don't want to pay the buyer's agent. That's their call. One. Two, we can't share what compensation is being offered, if any. Okay. If, if you're listing side, that should have no weight on whether or not somebody shows a house. And that's why they pulled it out. Okay, we get that. We're fine with it. Number three, buyers have to sign something before they see a house. Open houses excluded. 
You can go look at an open house, okay? Which is why I'm going to do that video probably next week. Open houses are going to be back. Sometimes people don't want to do open houses because da, 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 da. open houses are going to be back because people are just getting started and they don't want to sign with somebody you can go to open houses now, okay? And that's where that's where you're going to get some buyers, okay? So open houses are back. We'll talk about that more next week. But otherwise, you have to sign some kind of representation before you go see something. That's number three. Number four, you have to agree on the pay ahead of time. You have to agree on the compensation ahead of time. If you if the seller's not compensating, we'll compensate this. If the seller is compensating, we'll compensate. It all gets worked out ahead of time, so there's no surprises. And finally, if you want to buy a house without representation, just realize there, there's a potential that's going to save money. There's also potential that's going to bring some more liability, and some agents may may charge for that liability for the seller to where a seller may not take it. it. It's just one of those kind of work in progress kind of things. Again, that's how we approach it. That's not how the whole the whole group approaches it, but it's something to keep in mind. All right, so that's, that's those big changes in a nutshell. Below, in the comments, if you have questions, drop them there. My email is below. You can, sh you can hit me at the email. Um, but we're walking through this. First week has gone off kind of how we, we expected it to. A lot of the agents are adhering to the rules. Some of the agents are pretending like the rules never happened. It's kind of funny to watch it, watch it play out. They'll get their hand slapped. I can get my hand slapped. As, as you all know, I got seven kids. I, I got enough. <laughs> I get enough punishment every day. I get enough yelling and screaming every day. Okay. I'm a blessed man, but I also hear a lot of yelling and screaming. So uh, I don't need any more for my job than I already get. So there you go. That's where we are right now. But we're walking through it. The important thing is, more than ever, if you're looking to buy a house, you really need an agent to walk you through these fixes. If you're looking to sell a house, you really need a, an agent to help you walk through all these changes. Okay. And you need a good one. Before, you know, you could get get away with having an okay agent on the buy side, and they'll get you through a lot. Now you really need you, you need somebody strong. Okay, we've been doing this a while, so if you want to talk about your options, it doesn't even have to be this this month or even if you're not buying for a year or selling for a year. This is when we kind of lay the groundwork of in a year. This is where we want to be, things like that. So if you want to talk about where you are and how you can go forward, give us a call. Uh, I'm at 470-233-4409. Again, emails below. Drop in a comment. I appreciate your time. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Steve Malone, Home Team, EXP in Atlanta. Take care. Bye.